I've got huge XRP news for you guys. Another Wall Street firm files for an XRP spot ETF and a massive billion dollar fund has been tokenized on the XRP ledger. And Charles Hoskinson, the founder of Cardano, is saying Ripple and Cardano got cheated out in Wyoming for a stablecoin pilot. I'll give you the details there. And Solana's pump.fun gets shut down while it's live streaming at least. I'll share the details. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome into the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. I'm your host, Tony Edward. On your way in, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five-star rating and review. Folks, nothing to report on the price. Bitcoin and the altcoins are pulling back and building support levels. If you are a subscriber to this podcast, you know the deal. Nothing goes up in a straight line. We had a parabolic move for Bitcoin and many altcoins. We are seeing a pullback to build support levels, and we need those support levels in order to go to higher prices. So knowledge is power here, guys, to understand the charts and understand the market. So uh, we just got to be patient. Let Bitcoin and the altcoins do their thing. They will find a support level, and then they will start moving up. They could start moving up again this week, right, uh, as we head into Thanksgiving, but that's not a guarantee. We could have further downside. So just be prepared for both scenarios, guys, and, and don't move by emotions. Move by the charts, the data, and what the metrics are telling telling us. Now let's jump into some news guys. We got a report today that global ETF provider Wisdom Tree Funds has registered in the state of Delaware for an XRP spot ETF. Uh, Eleanor Turret of Fox Business said, I have confirmed with the company this is a legitimate filing. Wisdom Tree has over $100 billion in assets under management. Many of you know Wisdom Tree already has a Bitcoin and an Ethereum spot ETF. And we are seeing the race heat up here for an XRP spot ETF, guys. You got Bitwise filing for it, Canary funds and others and we saw grayscale make a move in relaunching their xrp trust they added xrp into their index fund so things are moving in the direction of getting more altcoin spot etfs in play we know uh, a solana etf is in play as well uh, in addition to an h bar so i think a lot of these issuers are anticipating a more favorable regulatory environment come 2025 as you have a pro crypto president coming into office that's donald trump of course and the most pro crypto Congress ever uh, coming into office and Gary Gensler will be out of the door and Trump has been appointing uh, pro crypto folks. We've been talking about the treasury of the secretary recently. He's pro crypto. So you can imagine the next SEC chair will be uh, pro crypto guys. So things are lining up here in 2025. It's going to be very interesting as these uh, applications get pushed through and we'll see the timing of the approvals. But of course, it's going to bring in a ton of liquidity into these altcoins. And that's very bullish if you're holding XRP, Solana, HBAR, and so forth. Now, the other big news around XRP is that Archex, in collaboration with Ripple, has launched the first tokenized money market fund on the XRP ledger. This groundbreaking initiative brings tokenized access to Arbidine. So Arbidine is huge. The $3.8 billion US dollar liquidity fund, paving the way for enhanced operational efficiencies and institutional adoption of real world asset tokenization. So this is very good. You want to see building on a blockchain, right? That is what helps to drive the value of the blockchain and its native token. This same principle applies to Solana, XRPL, Ethereum, Cardano. You want to have more developers, more applications. The more participants, the more adoption the network has, the stronger it becomes and the more valuable it becomes. And as mentioned, the native token will benefit from that. So it's great to see that the XRP ledger, whether you hate Ripple or you love Ripple or you hate XRP or you love XRP, it doesn't matter. The facts are, no feelings or emotions, there's building happening. They're going to be launching a stable coin on the XRP ledger. There's some meme coins happening on the XRP ledger. And all of that is conducive to more adoption value and all of that, and the stronger the network will become. So this is very bullish if you're holding XRP. Here's what uh, Ripple's president, Monica Long, had to say about the news. She said, live on the XRP ledger, access to Arbidine's 3.8 billion euro US dollar liquidity fund tokenized through Archex, an incredible milestone for the XRP ledger with Ripple custody securing Archex's assets underneath cross collaboration at its finest. Very bullish news here, guys. And I think as Ripple sees that Genser is out of the way, the SEC is going to be in a much favorable environment as it relates to crypto. They're going to start to ramp up their efforts. And, you know, maybe the things they were holding back uh, in the past, uh, they're going to feel a bit more free 
uh, to do that uh, versus fearful because the SEC may drop another lawsuit on him and things like that. Now, I don't know how many of you caught the stream that Charles Hoskinson did today. He's, of course, the founder of Cardano. He named that uh, live stream XRP in Wyoming. <laughs> so the TLDR, I highly recommend you go watch it. It's not a very long stream, but he talks about in Wyoming, there was some sort of uh, stablecoin proof of concept that was being put together by the state using uh, taxpayer dollars to test out if they could do this. And apparently, uh, the person who was in charge of this is a former consensus uh, employee. And Charles is pretty much saying, hey, this person is being biased. And they left out Cardano, they left out the XRP Ledger, and they only included Solana, Sui, Ethereum, and Layer 2s through Ethereum, like Polygon and Arbitrum and Base and so forth. And But funny enough, Avalanche and Stellar were there too. So Charles is saying, uh, you know, both Ripple and Cardano were not RFP'd, uh, didn't get a chance to even participate. Why would you block them when you're using taxpayer dollars? So Charles is saying he's going to investigate this and go after them. And he's also calling in the XRP army to go do some stuff here. But that's the TLDR. And once again, you guys can go check out the stream that Charles posted on Twitter as well as on his YouTube channel. But uh, it's interesting. And uh, look, it's not surprising that some of these things happen because some people are very bias but when you're using taxpayer dollars you can't be biased you have to uh, make sure that you have all the participants in the, in the market participate those who are credible of course and not meme coins or something like that um, but I hope you guys understand what I'm saying so interesting interesting update here by Charles and he's uh, trying to get the XRP army to go after these people so <laughs> we shall see folks a great place where you can uh, buy all coins and Bitcoin and all coins like Cardano and XRP and more is on uphold it's a platform I've been using since 2018 they have 300 plus cryptocurrencies they're available in over 150 countries and uh, they're easy to use they have a great app a great platform uh, folks, they are secure and reliable. Uh, they are fully reserved. They don't commingle or lend out your crypto assets, and you can review their transparency reports. They also have a great product called USD Interest Accounts, where you can park your crypto profits or dry powder and earn up to 4.65% APY. Uh, there's no lockups or terms, so you, you can pull your money in and out at any point. There are no monthly fees, so don't, they don't charge you, and uh, it's FDIC insured, so you can trust that your money is safe. Um, and once again, Uphold is a platform I've been using for years. I've interviewed the CEO, CFO, and, and many other representatives from the companies. So if you'd like to learn more, check out the link in the description. Now, guys, I'm not sure how many of you know about Pump.Fun. It is a meme coin platform on Solana. It's a great idea. You know, anyone can pretty much start up a meme coin and so forth. And I believe in the free market. But of course, you have to put guardrails, right? You got to make sure people are not scamming people or ripping them off. However, what was interesting about Pump.Fun, as some of you may know, there was a live stream aspect. So you could create a coin and live stream and get people to participate and uh, buy your token and whatever it may be. Unfortunately, human behavior was playing out in its full debauchery. People were doing all types of nonsense, putting themselves in cages and not sleeping and sitting on a toilet for, uh, for 48 to 72 hours straight, just doing all kinds of nonsense so they could get their token uh, to pump. And literally yesterday, I tweeted out that this is going to end up really bad. Someone is going to do something and get hurt or possibly pass away and crypto is going to get blamed. And thankfully, today, the folks at Pump.Fun disable the live stream aspect. So there's no more putting yourself out there to do something crazy or ridiculous just to have your coin pump. And while the idea of, you know, having the free market and people can create these things is amazing, um, and I'm not anti-creating the meme coin because I believe in the free market, you do have to put some guardrails in place because remember that kid, that 10-year-old who rugged uh, some guys for $30,000? You know, you can't have stuff like that happening. So you got to be careful. There has to be guardrails. So these type of platforms will have to get regulated, guys. But I'm really happy they turned this off. It's it's It was so important because things were just getting out of hand. Now, speaking of Solana, Solana's monthly DEX volume surpasses $100 billion for the first time. So whether you love or hate Solana, uh, it is getting incredible adoption. There's tons of meme coins, tons of activity happening. And these are things, as I mentioned earlier with the XRP Ledger, it, this is conducive to getting 
higher valuation for the network and the token. So according to DeFi Llama data, the network had a total of $109.8 billion in DEX trading volume so far in November. This is nearly double Ethereum's mainnet monthly DEX volume of $55 billion and represents a significant increase of over 100% compared to October's trading volume of $52.5 billion. So from a macro perspective, this is these are signs of the bull market, right? Things are heating up, retail is returning, people are launching NFTs, uh, meme coins, and much more. So a uh, very good sign. I do hold some Solana tokens. I, I saw the li VC liquidity coming in and I took a position and uh, increased that position uh, this year, um, you know, in the lows and so forth. But um, Things are moving in the right direction here for, for Solana. Another project that I'm bullish on and I hold a token for is Avalanche. And the native token is AVAX, of course. So Avalanche 9000 launches on Testnet over $40 million offered in retroactive rewards. So Avalanche 9000 includes numerous technical improvements aimed at reducing the cost of chain deployment by 99.9%. .9 Retro 9000, a $40 million grant program to reward builders developing layer one blockchains and other tools on the Avalanche 9000 testnet also launches Monday. So great news if you're an AVAX token holder. And as mentioned, I do hold this token. Um, Avalanche is actually, they're really targeting the gaming space. And uh, I'm going to try to get John Wu back on the uh, podcast. He's the head of uh, Ava Labs, and I've had him on a couple of times. So I'll try to get you guys some more details on things that are happening here. Now let's move ahead. Um, Albion VC leads $4 million in seed extension round for stablecoin yield products firm Open Trade. So we continue to see mergers and acquisitions, big time investments and expansions globally. And folks are looking to build different products as the crypto asset class and industry grows. So A16Z Crypto and CMCC Global also participated in Open Trade's seed extension. Open Trade previously raised $3.2 million in seed funding in April of this year. So built on Circle, Open Trade lets asset managers create yield-bearing on-chain lending products. Here's a quote. This funding allows us to continue on our growth trajectory, building products for some of the biggest and most important leaders in the space, said Open Trade CEO David Sutter in the statement. So uh, big news here. And A16Z, if they're backing it, you got to pay attention. A16Z is, of course, Andreessen Howard. So they are many times ahead of the curve with many of these projects. They have been investing for a long time, building in Web 1.0, building in, in and investing in Web 2.0. And now they're you know building and investing in Web 3.0. So you want to pay attention. Some of the smartest people are at uh, A16Z. Folks, that's the news. Let me know what you think. Uh, heads up tomorrow, I will be publishing my interview with PayPal's CTO of crypto, blockchain, and digital currency currencies. You don't want to miss that. PayPal is a payment giant. And of course, I asked the question, uh, have they pitched their former founder, uh, Elon Musk, about using PYUSD, their stablecoin on X and much more, guys. Uh, and PayPal, you know, offering crypto was a huge news and launching a stablecoin was huge news. And they are planning to ramp up their effort. So you don't want to miss this interview. Make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on. Folks, a great way you can support me in the podcast if you appreciate this free content is by subscribing to my free email newsletter on Substack. It's 100% free and also grab a copy of my book rethinking crypto it's available on amazon and paperback and digital buy a copy for yourself buy a few copies for your friends and family give them as gifts this uh this holiday help them to learn about this technology and how to invest in it guys knowledge is power don't let them get wrecked let them learn gain the knowledge so they can approach the market the right way and if you bought a copy already guys please leave a rating and review uh, it will really help out my rankings thank you so much i appreciate you all and i'll talk to you all later Thank you.